Hi everyone, Brooke Rogers here with the University Museums. I'm over at Curtis Hall today to start off our July Art Walk. The theme for today's walk is Art on the Floor, and a great place to start is here at Curtis Hall, like I mentioned. Uh, we are going to be looking at three works today. Uh, the first one, as I mentioned, here at Curtis Hall. The next one will be at Bio Renewables with Lila Anderson, and then we'll wrap up today's tour at the Memorial Union looking at the Zodiac. So uh, we'll do some different formats than we've done typically for our Facebook Live, but I'll talk a little bit more about that later. Uh, so I'll start with Julie Chain, All the Way Home, Terrazzo Floor. So we are on the second, or on the first floor of the Rotunda. Uh, there are two floors above us, and then obviously one floor below where the Terrazzo Floor is found. Uh, this work was completed in 2013 by Julie Chang. Julie Chang is a contemporary artist from uh, San Francisco. She has been doing art uh, for the last few decades. She's most known for her prints as well as her terrazzo floor work. Uh, in fact, she was just awarded one of the largest contracts for terrazzo floor in San Francisco at their uh, Bay Area Terminal. So very exciting that we have a piece of her work here. Uh, this artwork that we have of hers is very indicative of her other work as well. So we have some really interesting symbols. Uh, I probably would say the most notable one is this blue swirling arrow. Uh, Coyne mentioned just before we were filming that it kind of reminds him of Avatar The Last Airbender, and he's definitely on the right track there um, of this idea of air movement and uh, cycling through. So we have lots of natural elements as, as well besides the arrow. We have some soybean flowers, um, some just general greenery. Uh, we have little brass amulets of insects, and uh, let's see, we also have some deer hoofs as well in the bronze. Uh, we have some hexagons on the floor, which are supposed to represent hydrogen and all those wonderful bonds that hydrogen can form. Uh, and we can see some orange propellers. So there's a lot going on with the terrazzo floor. Uh, and the biggest theme is nature. Uh, so it's kind of interesting to think why we would have this theme here in this building, since this is a site-specific work. So Curtis Hall is uh, the home of the College of Agricultural Sciences as well as Life Sciences. So we have hundreds of students that come into this building uh, that are in those classes. So very diverse range of, uh, of people that are here, folks that are doing the science side of things, folks that are focusing on uh, society and anthropology, and then also other general classes like uh, psychology. So, Lots of folks cycle through here, and I think it's really interesting that the title for this uh, artwork is All the Way Home. And when I was reading more about why that was the title, uh, it actually goes back to uh, how we do our, our on-campus committee. So all of the artworks on the Art on Campus collection are done by a committee of people that work in the building, students, um, other folks who are knowledgeable about the ongoings of the buildings. Uh, and this particular team of the committee members were interested in making Curtis Hall um, kind of a home away from home for their students. Um, and that's where we get this title, All the Way Home. Uh, what's also interesting is the fact that since we do have so many different types of students coming into this building, there's different ways that the artwork connects to them. So if we have our scientists that are studying botany and horticulture, uh, those soybean flowers and greenery are really going to speak to them and the science that they're doing to find ways to feed uh, you know, more people. Uh, we have the wind energy and the orange and yellow propellers as well as the blue circular arrow showing that you know wind power water power are powerful sources of energy for us um, and are kind of our way of the future 
and the hexagons are really nice because that ties in some of those chemical elements um, that many of these disciplines draw from. So as I mentioned, this is a terrazzo floor. What does that mean specifically? So terrazzo is a particular method that's often used for floors and walls. Uh, it has a very old tradition that harkens back to the ancient Egyptians and ancient Romans. It's kind of the cousin to uh, mosaic floors. Uh, terrazzo has a couple of different compounds in it. So it has mica, rocks, uh, marble, different mineral substances that are then added to the composite. Uh, so each of the unique colors has a different material matrix of it. Uh, and you'll see that in order for the terrazzo to have different colors, there are little metal kind of lines that separate the work. Uh, this is very similar to, uh, let's see, um, gosh, I lost the word. Stained glass, how there's the, the little metal pieces in between the colors to separate them. That's what's going on here. So the arrows separate the different parts and then those, um, those lines are then filled in with the medium. So Julie chose quite a number of different colors. We have various shades of blue, uh, a couple of different greens, orange, pink, mauve, um, and then those brass inlets as well. So she had to individually choose the different colors for each of those. And then when they installed it, they had to be very mindful of what colors went where. It's almost kind of like a paint by numbers, but uh, with rock material. Uh, terrazzo floors are something that is very common on campus. Uh, really, if you look at any of our buildings that were done in the 1920s, you'll see a lot of terrazzo floor that was very popular during that time and continues to be popular to this day. Uh, it's a really nice decorative element to add. Uh, I was doing some research on this and I found out from our director, Lynn Pullman, that when Julie came here to work on the installation of this work, she was actually nine months pregnant uh, and was helping us to install. So we had some great pictures of Julie uh, working here while she was pregnant. And luckily she didn't have her baby when she was here. She was able to go back to San Francisco uh, but really, really fascinating how she was so committed to this work that she came out here to check it out. Quinn, do you want to go downstairs so we can get a closer look? Let's do Perfect. it. Perfect. So we'll kind of have a stairwell. We'll just go down. Now what's really fascinating is that this is on the first floor where we just were, but there's two floors above us. And on those floors, you can also look down and see uh, the artwork in the middle of the room. So kind of fun to see the different uh, levels and see things from a different scale. Uh, so if we go in close on one of the colors, we'll see that it has a, a mixture of different materials. So depending on what color you're going for, you would add different things. If you want pieces to sparkle, you can add some mica, like pieces here, that adds a nice shimmer. Uh, those are some of the brass inlets. There's an insect, which is great for our agricultural students. Insects are very important to so many processes that affect our natural landscape. We have some deer hooves kind of trailing through. And it's interesting how she's worked these into the terrazzo pieces. We can see some of the windmill blades. I always love seeing those when I'm on the highway drive by. Um, the blue arrow, I love to see the mix of the colors. Um, this is a great example of this area here where you have that metal insert separating the pieces and then you can add your color inside those areas. Do we have any questions from the audience on this piece of art? No? Okay, well, 
If you do, uh, send us a message. We'd be happy to answer. Uh, but for now, we'll wrap up. Uh, so what's going to happen here is this Facebook live stream is going to end. And then I'm going to pass it over to Lila, who's over at the Bio Renewables Complex. And she'll take over the live stream from there. So what's going to happen is when this stream ends, you'll need to refresh your Facebook feed. Uh, go to our Facebook page, which is University Museums at Iowa State. And there's going to be a second video in between. We have one question. Oh, wonderful. How many students do you think walk, or do you think a lot of students walk across this throughout the day? Or is oh. it just there for display? I would absolutely say there's hundreds of students that walk by this during a normal day. Um, right now we're in the middle of COVID, so most of the buildings are closed, so it's quite quiet right now, but um, you'll see, at least from my position, there's two different hallways that this leads off to the classroom. We have the Model Center the Student Services Wing, where we have some career services. Uh, we have another hallway that has some um, technology. Um, themed areas, some nice sitting areas here as well. So lots of students will walk by this and uh, since this is a smaller piece of work, uh, they may not notice that they're walking right over it, but it is a, a good spot to see some really great art. And what building are we in again? We are in Curtis Hall, which is just right across the campus from Beardshire. Wonderful, I'll pass it on over to Lila and then see you guys at the Memorial Union.
there is a little tiny gold dot that shows where we are. Uh, and we'll uh, kind of watch that gold dot as we keep going uh, further along. So we are here. <laughs> and again, this is the Trasso floor. Um, this is another great example of how um, the Art on Campus artworks can really come together with the architecture of campus and they're very building specific, site specific. Um, so uh, helping with working with the architects of the building, that's why we can have this great kind of integration of uh, the artwork with, uh, with the architecture. So let's keep going. And now as we're kind of zooming in, we find our next circle on the map. We still see this gold dot. And I try to kind of not give too much information before we get further and kind of see what's happening. So our next one, at this point, students start to say, oh yeah, we get it. We're zooming in here and, and this is us. Uh, I, would, I do like to point out that once we get to this map, we see not state borders, but we see waterways. And the map that uh, Helmick has chosen to, to represent and to keep repeating through this artwork is the, a map of the water in the, state, uh, in the states. So here's our gold dot again. And I think you probably have a good idea of where we're going next. And we made it to the state of Iowa. And again, we have the map of the waterways that then mirrors the one that you can see um, above in the, in the panel that uh, is visible from the very front of the artwork. And I really like this element that um, the artist has used to help kind of move us through the space. So um, you can see that we're going from that front door. And if you follow this, it's leading us straight into the laboratories in the back of the Sukhapal, where a lot of research is being conducted. Um, so it's, it's definitely grounding us in this uh, space, I think. So now we get to this map, and we are zooming in really close now. We're on Iowa State's campus. You can see again our gold dot is over here, and we have this filled-in silver building to show actually the biorenewables complex and then we'll go even further and this one you'll notice is a little different it has a double circle um, so not only do we have this interior circle but we also have the exterior circle that almost um, indicates that sort of you are here when you think about maps and wayfinding the double circle will often indicate you know this is, this is the spot, um, and here we are standing on this spot because <laughs> uh, here's our front doors and we're in uh, Sukup Atrium and we've made it to this spot. So I want uh, you to now turn around and all of a sudden we have this amazing view of the other side of uh, the hanging sculpture and I think this is such a wow moment uh, when I take classes through here you take this path and you're looking at the floor and thinking about place and where you are and the landscape of Iowa and you make it to this double circle and look around turn around and here you have um, this amazing kind of view that comes into focus where again we see the changing uh, forms and histories of agriculture starting with uh, hand tools out in the fields. Going up, we see a horse and carriage, then the tractor appears. Um, up at the top, we see more like mechanized um, systems of farming. And then at the very top, we actually see where we are. We see our campus. You can see the Campanile um, Wall Hall. We see the uh, water tower. And, and here we are at Iowa State. So again, very much kind of emphasizing this idea of place and um, you know this idea of study and what's happening in the building. Uh, we have the red wing blackbird, the dragonfly, and the cattails, which I think are a great symbols of wetlands. And again, going back to that idea of talking about uh, ecology, waterways, uh, riverways in Iowa, and how important those are in their interaction um, to agriculture and um, 
changing methods in that field. Uh, I do want to come back down out of the out of the stratosphere and go one step further because actually the double circle is not the very end of our floor um, terrazzo design, but we actually have one more good all the way here at the end. And this is where maybe you chemistry buffs can step in and say, oh yes, I know exactly what atom that is. But here we have the carbon atom. And I think it was very important for Helmick to be able to represent um, the idea of uh, this molecule that gives life is very connected to uh, biology and science. And it really is the one that leads you in to the labs behind you. So we've gone from a timescape of out in the solar system, out of the galaxy, and we've moved all the way to a molecular level here. And from that molecular level that we can have uh, maybe a, a different view. So I think uh, this element of using the floor and the terrazzo design in the floor allows you to have a different perspective um, and look at uh, this work of art and be able to have different ways of looking at it. And I think that's very exciting and uh, definitely kind of grounds it in a very much a sense of place. Uh, Do we have any questions that popped up for us? Oh no, Brooke got all the questions. Okay, well, I'm actually going to transfer you back over to Brooke. So hopefully she's successfully walked over to the Memorial Union and it's going to take you to see one last work of art that focuses um, again on art that's on the floor and uh, underfoot. Uh, so we're going to uh, stop our feet and we encourage you to, to hang on there. Again, maybe try and refresh your feed and then it should pop up again with our last uh, Facebook live feed back with Brooke. So thanks for tuning in and stick around and go on over to the Memorial Union with us. surrounded by kind of the hexagonal shape that's intertwined 